Millennium and Corpthorne Hotels, New Zealand. Potentially the most undervalued stock listed on the NZX, currently trading at $1.80 with a market cap of $280 million. Why is this company potentially the most undervalued company listed on the NZX? The company claims to have a net tangible asset of $4.44. This essentially means if the company were to go into liquidation, you would theoretically get $4.44 back, which is over a two times gain instantly if you bought at the current market price. As we all know, the hotel industry have been heavily impacted by the pandemic. Hotel stocks globally have plunged. However, in a turn of events, this company's recent half year financial performance has surprised us. In this video, we'll go into more details and explore all these possibilities. If you find this video insightful, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe button to help the channel out and to keep updated on all the insights we dig up. But for now, let's jump right into it. So just a little bit of background on the company first. We'll just refer to them as Millennium NZ for easy saying. So Millennium NZ owns slash operates 20 hotels nationwide. These hotels include the likes of M Social and Grand Millennium, which are reputed lavish hotels. Millennium NZ is a subsidiary of Millennium International, which is owned by the parent company City Developments Limited, which is a massive real estate development company in Singapore, which owns 70% of Millennium's shares. Millennium NZ is not just a hotel company, it's a property company with hotel assets. Its other operations include the sales of residential units in Sydney, with their Zenith residential property, which according to their 2019 report has an annual occupancy rate of 92%. Furthermore, the company engages in land developments in New Zealand. This brings us to their subsidiary, CDL Investments New Zealand. CDL is a residential land development company that develops sections for sale. Currently, Millennium NZ owns 66% of CDL's shares. If we take a look at their financial performance over the last five years before the pandemic, we can see that their revenue has been growing quite well from 136 million to 229 million last year. Similarly, their profit has increased from 21 million in 2015 to almost 50 million last year, which is good, but their growth rate year on year has been plummeting in recent years. Regardless, if they can maintain this, it would give them a PE ratio of 5.6 if we take their preferential shares into account as well, which suggests that the stock is undervalued. We all know this year, hotel revenues have been hit hard by COVID-19, hence why hotel stock prices have been plummeting globally due to the uncertainty of profitability and survivability of these hotels, especially in New Zealand where we had nationwide lockdowns, which is why for us, their half year results were surprising. For the half year from Jan to June 30th, Millennium made $26 million profit before tax. This was although due mostly to the fact that their land development business was barely affected by the pandemic, which resulted in them making $19 million in profit before tax. Even their hotel segment actually made a profit of $3.7 million before tax, which to us shows a strong survivability of their hotels. However, their normal hotel operations were very negatively impacted, but the silver lining to this is that their two biggest hotels in Auckland, Grand Millennium and M Social, are actually occupied by the New Zealand government as a managed isolation facility which is a good second income. And the company has said that these two hotels will continue to provide managed isolation during the second half of 2020 as well. So now let's move on to their balance sheet. In the beginning of the video, we mentioned net tangible assets. Net tangible assets are total assets of the company, minus intangible assets such as goodwill, patents and trademarks, as well as minusing all liabilities and the par value of preferred stock. So basically, the net tangible asset is the value of physical assets such as plant, property and equipment, as well as inventories and cash instruments minus liabilities. So if we look at their balance sheet, we can see that they have total assets of 955 million which doesn't include intangible assets, while they only have 158 million of total liabilities which results in net assets being 797 million. If you exclude Millennium's preferential shares, you would end up with $4.44 a share. So for every Millennium's ordinary share, which is currently trading at $1.80, is backed by $4.44 worth of assets. Furthermore, if we take a closer look into their balance sheet, we can see that they have 182 million in cash, where 26 million is directly held and 156 million is held in short-term deposit. This means that the company actually has more cash than total liabilities. Now, we're not businessmen, but we would imagine it would be quite hard for a company to go bankrupt when they have more cash than their total debt. So we think it's safe to say that they're in a very strong financial position with a strong balance sheet. Now, the things we've discussed so far sound well and good, but here are some of the risks. MCK has performed relatively well in the first half and even the hotel segment was able to avoid a loss. However, in this 6 months period, it includes January and February, which were barely affected by the pandemic. So the profits made in this period would have covered for a lot of their declines from March onwards. So it is quite likely their hotel segment may enter negative territory in the second half of the year. 
Furthermore, it is still likely that the negative impacts by the virus will continue until next year. Therefore, hotel operation will continue to be grim for the foreseeable future. And the chairman of MCK has said, We also believe that we have not yet seen the full extent of the economic effects of COVID-19. This also means that your investment may be tied up for a while. So potentially, only put in money that you feel you won't need anytime soon. If we look into their revenues by operating segments, we can see that their property sales have now grown to take up almost half their business. And in terms of profitability, property sales is now greater. Although MCK's property sales business has been doing well, we have to remember that New Zealand property market has been in a boom for the last decade, which helped this business to be more profitable. However, now with the virus, the property market has never been more uncertain, and if land prices decline or don't go up, MCK's profitability may be significantly reduced and may result in a negative growth in terms of profit. Another thing to note is that MCK's share trading volume is very thin. On average, only $25,000 worth of shares get traded each day, and the buy and sell walls shown on the table is worth less than $100,000, so one big buyer or a seller can move the share price drastically, therefore is not ideal for bigger volume investors. In a nutshell, the company has taken a hit by the virus and their hotel revenue has gone down. And while the foreseeable future is still uncertain, their balance sheet suggests that the company is in a strong position to make it through these obstacles. Given that even with these economic conditions, the company has surprisingly done better than what one would expect. If the company were to continue on this path, the potential for growth after this pandemic could even be greater. Only time will tell, but we are definitely optimistic. Hope the video was useful to you and helped you gain a better insight into the company we thought that was very under the radar and quite frankly, undervalued. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe button to stay updated on our latest stock analysis. We'll see you next time.